Curtis, and she will come and read our scripture. celebrate him. He is our king. He is our mighty God. We've come to lift him up. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together with me. Repeat after me. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life me to sing.
just wanna thank you. Oh Lord, I just wanna thank you. Lord, I just wanna thank you.
he brought you from. You know where he picked you up from. Say thank you. Lord, I thank you. Could nobody do what he's done for me but him. All might, all power, all intelligence is unto you, O Lord. Oh, God, I owe you my life. presiding prelate, Bishop C.L. Hardy, our assistant presiding prelate, uh, would like to also give honor to the man of this house, Bishop Alfonso Bratcher, our District 1 diocesan, Bishop Philip Watkins, our District 1 chairman, Bishop Joseph Marcus, our vice chairman, and the lovely Minister Venus King, our Afaya District 1 youth president, and to everyone listening, uh, praise the Lord to you. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can, for a brief moment, turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. I came to encourage us in the mode of evangelism with a special emphasis to college and high school, uh, excuse me, college students and high school juniors and seniors. So as you pull up Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, as it was announced, I'm here to speak on behalf of C. MI, which stands for Campus Ministry International, and we'll talk about that pretty soon. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You may be seated. For the brief time that we have together, I'm here to speak to you on the topic, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. 
the spirit of the Lord is upon you. This message, uh, this passage of scripture rather, Jesus quotes really from Isaiah 61 verses one to two. He's standing in the middle of a synagogue and he proclaims pretty much his job description. He says that I am here to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to, a pre to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I came to tell you that if that same spirit was on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, anyone filled with the Holy Ghost has that same spirit upon them. Jesus' job description therefore becomes our job description. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, these are Jesus' words, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Mark 16, 17, 18 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if, any, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The Lord doesn't want us to just stop, though, at the sign of speaking in tongues. I thank the Lord for salvation, but he wants us to use what we have to then go and reach others. This verse doesn't just say the sign of speaking in tongues will follow you, but also they shall cast out devils, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So when John the Baptist was in prison, he sent two of his disciples to Jesus and said, are you the one that we're looking for, or is there really another person we should be waiting on? Jesus didn't say, yes, I am the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of David, he that should come into the world. Jesus simply just said, well, go and show John my fruit. So in Matthew 11, 2 through 6, he says, tell John. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now, for those who read Luke chapter 4, that sounds very similar to the message that Jesus proclaimed in the synagogue. This was the fruit of Jesus' ministry. His identity from the Spirit of the Lord being upon him was to do these works. And throughout his ministry, there was fruit shown. Now, I mentioned I was here to talk about Campus Ministry International, which we call CMI, as well as evangelism for all ages, I want to show you some of the fruit of campus ministry. These are the things that I myself and our campus ministers throughout the district have seen. We have seen college students not only come to our church and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but we've also seen college students baptized in swimming pools. We've not only seen college students come to our churches and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, but we've seen college students filled with the Holy Ghost in the middle of dorm rooms and classrooms. We've not only seen college students, buses and vans coming to our schools to pick up students to transport them to church, but we've also seen the need for apostolic ministers and elders to go to the campuses and host Sunday morning services because the need and the demand from students is so great. We've not only seen high school students filling classrooms eager to hear the word of God, but the classrooms not being big enough to contain them, so they have to fill up auditoriums and gymnasiums. We've not only seen students who are in need of prayer, but we've seen students not need casts and crutches anymore because they're healed on site at their schools. Thank you, Jesus. This is just a few things. I have a couple more. We've seen students of other faiths. Muslims and Catholics converted, receiving the plan of salvation and going and telling their families and communities. We've seen students leave fraternities and sororities, saved, speaking in tongues, baptized in Jesus' name, pursuing a holy life. And we've seen us, apostolic students, gathering on college campuses and high school campuses, walking around, proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, finding the things that aren't of God and loosing God's will to be done at their schools. These are just a few of the things that we have seen. And so the same way that Jesus said, go and tell John, I'm here to tell you, the same spirit is upon you and greater things shall you do. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord wants to add to his church daily, and I have two of my own personal testimonies to share with you. On April 6th, which is now my favorite day in the whole world, April 6th, 2016, it was a Wednesday. I was at Towson doing a Bible study with a young lady on the plan of salvation. Afterwards, I asked her, do you want to receive the Holy Ghost? And she said, yes. We started praying, and right in the middle of my dorm room, she started speaking in tongues, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Now, there's a reason why April 6th is my favorite day. April 6th of this year, five whole years later, which was a Tuesday, after doing a Zoom Bible study with another young lady, she ended up coming to our church, getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Ghost all on the same day. Not only that, she is now witnessing to her fellow classmates at Howard Community College. She's a faithful member of our church, faithful member of our Sunday school class, and comes to our campus ministry training. There's no telling what God can do. And you might say, well, the things that I've heard, they don't always fit within this nice tiny box of, of church. Well, I came to let us know that maybe we need to let God outside of the box that we've put him in. Thank you, Lord. Acts 1 and 8 says, and we know this verse because we quote it all the time, you shall receive power. But what is that power for? To be witnesses. Matthew 28, 19 isn't optional. It's a commandment. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. How can we reach all nations? Well, college campuses are the place where members of all over several different countries come. And I'll tell you about that because Paul recognized this. Take a look at Acts chapter 19. Paul is said to have spoken daily, disputed daily, for the course of two years in a school owned by a man named Tyrannus. As a result, it says, all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that tells me Paul did campus ministry and the time it would take to earn an associate's degree, Paul preached and taught every single day until an entire continent heard the word of God. That same spirit is upon you. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I came to ask us a question. If we're not reaping souls, then what are we sowing? If we're not reaping souls, if we don't have the fruit that Jesus himself had, then what are we sowing? The scripture says, and Jesus himself said, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Jesus then said, and the Lord stopped me at this verse. I had never seen it this way. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and Jesus said I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity now this verse is talking about those who do many wonderful works but with not the right spirit not with the fruit of the spirit but the Lord stopped me and said Tiara the reality is in today's Laodicean age, my people aren't even doing this. They're not prophesying in my name. They're not casting out devils and they're not doing many wonderful works. They're so scared of whichever they're scared of using excuses where God's gonna say, I will say I never knew you because you never did the work of my father. You never produced the same fruit that I produced. Luke chapter four, Verse 14 says, and this is um, the conclusion of the scripture that we read earlier when Jesus stood up in the synagogue. Really, this was the middle of such a beautiful um, parallel of what our lives are. In Luke chapter three, Jesus was baptized. In Luke chapter four, at the beginning, he is led into the wilderness for 40 days. That's a consecration period. He fasted for 40 days. In the verse that we read together, he accepted his identity. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to do these miracles many wonderful works. But then in the remainder of Luke chapter 4, you see that he's persecuted. They take him out the temple to throw him off a cliff and, cliff, and he just mysteriously disappears. I don't know how Jesus does what he does, but he's awesome. He escapes persecution. Then he goes and casts out more devils, and then he heals the sick. And so I call to you guys today, are you willing to take up that same mantle that Jesus had. In verse 43 of Luke chapter four, when they begged him to stay in that same city, Jesus said, I can't stay. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. When Jesus made an end of his declaration of who he was, that the spirit of the Lord was upon him, it says he dropped the mic, I mean that he closed the book and then he took his seat. And then he said, this day is this prophecy fulfilled in your ears. I came to ask you, what will you do this day? What will you do this day? I invite you, if you have your phones, very briefly, and then I'll take my seat. If you have your phones, pull up Instagram, and then shut it down right when I sit down. Pull up Instagram. <laughs> Type in a fire 
D1CMI, Afia D1CMI, and click follow. This will allow you to get in touch with us so that we can show you our trainings, so that you can get a part of our mentorship program, Afia D1CMI. For those who have Facebook, type in Afia District 1. You may have to spell it out, Afia District 1. CMI and click like, click follow. Again, you'll be able to see our trainings which are currently held every other Thursday. We do prayer walks around college campuses and high schools and all of the fruit that I shared with you, you'll be able to be partakers of that and fulfill the Great Commission. And lastly, hop on YouTube and type Afia District 1, Afia District 1. Facebook and Instagram is Afia D1 CMI, and YouTube is Afia District 1. But please know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you for tuning in to AFFI District 1's Virtual Council. It's offering time. And there are multiple ways for you to give. First, you can visit the AFFI District 1 website. Click the Donate tab and use the PayPal. We do accept all of these types of cards. Or option number two, open the cash shop on your phone, type in your dollar amount, and send to dollar sign AFFID1. Remember, Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Go ahead, take a few moments to sow into this ministry. Don't forget to tune back in when you're done giving.
thank you for your support. We now return to AFFI District 1's Virtual Council. All right, now at this time, we're going to have a musical selection from the Sounds of Praise, Infam Laurel Praise Team. Praise the Lord. Bless him. Bless him. God bless you, everybody. How many of you know that our God is greater? Our God is greater than anything that you're dealing with, anything that you're going through. Come on, take a moment just to think about that. Take a moment just to open your mouth and lift your hands and just worship the Lord with us today as we bless him.
just worship the name of the Lord in here? How many just want to be in his presence? I don't know about you, but there's some things that go on in my life that I just want to be with the King of glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, worship with us as we sing. We don't come just in to do a show or entertain you, but we come to invite you in.
the scriptures, the prayer. We appreciate Lord praise team. I love you all. I love when you praise God. Actually, I love infant when they praise God. It's real. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just to hear them sing and give praise unto our King and unto our God in the beauty of holiness, not looking for somebody to see if somebody's going to jump up at a note or this or not. I don't care. I'll close my eyes and I'll give him what he's due because it's not about what you see. It's about God's approval of what I'm offering. Hallelujah. So we truly thank and praise God for everyone that has participated thus far. We thank God for our presiding bishop in the person of Bishop Charles Johnson, who has, um, God has just truly been blessing him and just been keeping him and we thank him. Uh, we thank God for our diocesan bishop. It's always a privilege to come to Wayback for one. Cause y'all my church, I love you all. Um, and I was thinking about you all this week um, cause blood songs all week long. And I was like, I need to get to way back. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, just, yeah, just to sit in the, in the service, just to sit in the service sometimes and to hear the saints sing, it, it does something. Hallelujah, that worship going back to the cross, it does something to you that other songs don't normally do. Hallelujah, so we thank and praise God for Bishop Bratcher who is here on today. We thank God for Bishop Watkins chairman, Bishop Marcus, our vice chairman, truly praise God for our leadership as a whole. Uh, without any further ado, I praise God for this young man and the person of Minister Chad Parker. It's so interesting how you don't know how small a world it is. Um, as you all know, because I say it all the time, um, from Chicago and I'm from PCAF Illinois, PCAF the organization, that's where I came from. And um, I, his wife actually went to Indiana, um, Indiana Church, that's what we call um, your church, and we would have our conferences there. The Lord would move there. I remember conventions and things like that. And you don't know, <laughs> then I moved to Maryland, didn't know no, but didn't think I knew too many people. And I get in contact with the Davises, of course you all know. Love that family. I am a Davis, hallelujah, by adoption. And I thank God for that. But I would hear things about 
Minister Parker, I would hear things about, you know, his wife. And I remember when um, they were all coming down, they were getting married. I was like, I'm trying to put a face to the name. You know, who are, you know? And then Evangelist Bell, and then Daniel Mills, and all, you know, the people that we know. And you don't know, you know, who you know. But I truly appreciate God for this young man's life, his example. It's not just a show, not just, you know, for people to pat him on the back, but it is a real walk. And I thank God for his testimony, like even testimony with his wife. If you all ever get an opportunity to talk to him and his wife, just talk to him and ask him about testimonies. That's it. Just let him give you testimonies. God is truly such a good God. He does miraculous things. And sometimes we don't know when we're going to be the conduit. But God will say this day, you will be the miracle. Hallelujah, Jesus. So truly we thank and praise God for his walk and his example. We thank and praise God for his leadership and the person of Elder Justin Marcus. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand to their leadership. So I'm not going to hold you long. Without any further ado, we're going to allow the man of God to preach the word of God and be led as the Lord say. So let's receive him with a standing ovation to preach the word of God and to allow the Lord to use him in Jesus' name. That's all right for me, but come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. It's in him we live. We move and have our very being. Come on, that's nice if that was for me, but we're talking about the King of Kings. We're talking about the Lord of Lords. We're talking about the one that gave your life. We're talking about the one that woke you up. Come on, if you can lift your hands, lift your hands. That's called the full activity of your limbs. Come on, you ought to give them thanks for that. You ought to give them praise for that because some people don't have that opportunity anymore. Some people already took their last breath. Some people were expecting to wake up but didn't. But thanks be unto God, that ain't my testimony. Hallelujah, but I'm here today to give them the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we thank God. Hallelujah, protocol has already been established, but we certainly would be remiss if we did not honor our state youth president in the personage of Minister Vinnie's King. Come on, put your hands together for her. Hallelujah, I'm thankful for the invitation, thankful to be thought of, and thankful to have some folk from Chicago behind me, amen. So, <laughs> but we're gonna go forth in Jesus' name. I would be remiss if I did not honor my lovely wife, uh, Minister Brianna Parker. Please put your hands together for her. She's in the house today. But I'm going to move very swiftly because we're on a time of it, amen. Let's turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. And I'm going to read three verses in your hearing. We're going to touch heaven and we're going to go on home. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 1 through 3. Holler back at me when you have it and say, I have the word. Verse number 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. I'm going to read verse number two one more time. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. I need you to help me to preach this afternoon. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've decided to keep my joy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I've decided to keep my joy. You know, the more saints and friends that I pay attention to what seems to be happening, uh, and not just in the world at large, but to be more specific in the local assemblies uh, that I've been connected to both on the East Coast and in the Midwest, it, it seems that we're in a season where it's common, uh, not only for the lady, but even the ecclesia, uh, the leadership to give up. Uh, it seems as though uh, for many that the pressures of life and more importantly, uh, the pressures of the life in Christ have caused many to faint. 
Uh, some would be quick at looking at this to give the devil some credit. Some would say that it's his fault. They would give him credit for this. However, I think that we've got to level set and give ourselves a reminder that uh, the enemy is limited in his power. The enemy does not have all power. The enemy cannot forcibly take anything from the child of God, but he only has the power to convince us to lay it down. And so the question is, uh, was this the devil or perhaps did we make a decision to bow out before the Lord was finished in what he started, uh, that, that work that he started on the inside of us? And, and many of us are, are sitting in services, sitting, sitting in churches and have been convinced to, to throw in the towel because uh, uh, we've gotten to a place where we've lost hope, not not the hope that keeps pulling us into the sanctuary, but but the hope that would pull us into his presence. And, and that's a dangerous place to be in. That's a dangerous place for us to find ourselves in because uh, losing all hope is really only one step away from losing one's life. But but I believe that the Holy Ghost led me here today to talk to somebody that that's been sitting in their seat, but they still feel like giving up. And, and I've come to an encourage you that that while you may feel like throwing in the towel you you've got to remember that you've come too far to quit and, and if you would just learn how to lean on the Lord with the right perspective God is going to send you some help to endure somebody ought to clap their hands and begin to give God some praise um, and so it's here in the text, it's, it's here in the text that the Bible speaks of, of joy that was set before Jesus. And, and we know that this joy is metaphorically speaking of the promise. He's, he's speaking of the promise, the problem that his, the promise rather that his death would bring about salvation for mankind. How, however, that same joy is joy in a literal sense. It, in the literal sense, it's impacting the humanity of Christ. Figuratively, it's the promise. But literally, it is impacting the humanity of Jesus Christ. The Strong's Concordance would identify joy to, to be the word shara, which simply means to have a cheerful calmness. In other words, joy is a combative agent. Joy, joy is a combative agent for a wide array of negative emotions. Joy, joy that conquers the emotions that would fight against our faith and would cause us to faint. Joy, joy comes because while we may start in faith and while we may endeavor to end in faith joy is the active agent in the middle that helps us to endure trials along the way joy 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 when it rises up against pressure it's synonymous with peace I was in the middle of a trial and I felt like giving up but out of nowhere God gave me this calmness gave me this sense of peace gave me this settledness in my spirit which would bring about clarity to what the scripture says in Philippians chapter number 4 verse number 6 the Bible declares be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication don't forget this with thanksgiving sometimes we leave off the with thanksgiving but with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding oh that's right that peace that calmness it's synonymous with joy and right there we get a revelation that joy is not just an emotion but joy is heaven's response to our choice to be thankful. Y'all better hear me today. The Bible says before we ever make a request we ought to be thankful. We ought to think about his goodness. We ought to go down memory lane. We ought to remember where he brought us from. We used to sing a song said look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where the Lord has brought me from. We ought to be thankful. You ought to practice right now. You ought to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for being concerned about my concerns. Now he says before you make your request, you ought to be thankful. And it's that decision to be thankful. Now let me calm down for a moment. It's that decision to be thankful. That causes God to respond with the peace. Saints and friends, we got to remember. We got to fight our minds sometimes. We got to struggle to remember that the peace.
peace that God gives is more important than your request. I don't know about y'all. Hey, but I gotta be honest. There are some times where I went to God about my needs and because he loves me, he answered my request. And I walked away happy for a moment. But the moment that trial started beating on my back, the moment that the pressures of life started weighing on me, all my happiness, all my satisfaction felt like I was robbed of the hope that God gave me. Here I am in this low place. Here I am in this super, wondering how I can get out. And that's because we can't find joy in certain things, but we can only find joy in his presence because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Yeah, Lord. And so it's vital, vital, y'all, for us to learn in a season where the physical doors of the church have been shut, uh, that we open up the doors of our heart and that they remain open because our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeks whom he may devour. Yeah, but I refuse to die when God said live. Live. Lord, have mercy. And this is why the Bible, this is why the Bible would declare that we have a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, there are a large number, a large number of stories of people, y'all. We call them the heroes of faith who did not see the promise of the new covenant fulfilled, but they died in faith, not having yet seen the fulfillment of what God said. They interacted with God externally, but they didn't have the privilege we had on the inside internally. Wow, we got a precious promise, y'all. We got lucky. I'm so glad I grew up when I did. I don't know how life would feel when I'm gone on the inside. I don't know how life would feel. Yes, I do. It would be lonely. Yes, I do. It would be misery. Yes, I do. It would be depression. Yes, I do. It's called suicide. But thankfully, we ain't got to live in that place. And so the enemy will try his best to allow the pressure of the promise to squeeze out our ability to, to hold on to our character. And although the heroes of faith were perfect, and nevertheless they were encouraged in the scripture to, to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset them. And while all times we read this text and we think about what we call the big sins, we think about fornication, we think about lying. We think about adultery. We think about we think about stealing. Yeah, but the Bible says it's the little foxes. It's the little foxes that's going to spoil the act. In other words, let me 2020 it for you. It's the little foxes that you won't notice. That a group of you. Have you in a place you never expected? Have you gone further than you intended? Have you lost without a ship? Without a sail? Y'all better hear me. Oh, saints, please hear me. Satan is too smart to try you with a temptation that you see coming. So he's going to try you with an unexpected emotional low. What are you talking about? Moses was wonderful until he got agitated. Abraham was honest until he got fearful. Sarah conceived, but she laughed with doubt. And so the question I have for you is, how do you handle your pressure? How do you handle when life is way? on you. How do you deal with your difficulty? Because we're going to have to learn how to endure when it seems like life is falling apart. Yeah, somebody says, how do you endure a preacher? The Bible says looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, the Lord already knew that we would have moments of being overwhelmed. God already saw us sitting in the middle of our depression. God already knew that we would have weeks where we wept. But I stand by to encourage you, church. Look up. Look up. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help. Not some of your help. Some of you depending on friends. Some of you depending on family. Some of you depending on money. But all of your help, it comes from the Lord. He is the author. In other words, he is the one who put the story called your life together. He knew your end before your beginning. And I thank God that when he called you, he 
was faithful and kind enough to show you some of your best chapters so that along the way you wouldn't faint you wouldn't give up too early you wouldn't throw in the towel because you ain't seen what God said yet so he shows you a preview he gives you a quick clip and says keep moving I got you he sends you a word says hold on hold your peace I'll fight your battles I'll hold you up God knows how to get the story finished oh Lord so we would faint before we receive the promise it's the same author y'all that made heaven and earth the Bible says that he hung the earth up on nothing if his word is powerful enough to hold up the world why 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 wouldn't this word be strong enough to hold us up he is the finisher and not just the author he's the finisher that means he has the resolution he has the final say that means failure ain't final that means your low place ain't your destiny and it's time for you to, to turn the page it's time for you to, to start a new chapter to, to see what the end's gonna be somebody clap their hands and give God praise in this place oh, Jesus uh, y'all come on I'm through talking uh, so the question is uh, the question is how we gonna get there uh, the Bible says who for the joy who for the joy that was set before him to endured the cross saints and friends your ability to endure is found in your joy y'all better get that in your spirit your ability to go through is found in your ability to acquire and keep your joy so while the devil wants me down in the dumps I've decided I'm going to keep my joy is there anybody else in here that's made up their mind today I am going to keep my joy how you going to keep your joy how you going to keep your joy I'm going to do what Jesus did I'm going to find a private place a private place to pray the scripture declares that in Jesus' most difficult moments, he prays, Father, if it be possible, let this come pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And so in other words, it was in the middle of preparation for his own death that Jesus shows us how to find some strength in the middle of your suffering so whether you find yourself in the valley whether you find yourself in the mountaintop or whether you find yourself sitting in the garden be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known unto God rewind that with thanksgiving with thanksgiving with thanksgiving and the peace of God in other words if you can find a private place to give God thanks God will find you in a public place to give you peace to give you joy to give you victory Lord I thank you for saving a drug dealer Lord I thank you for stopping this whoremonger Lord, I thank you for getting the mind of this thing. What you doing, preacher? I'm about to get my joy back. Lord, I thank you. Thank you that you've been good. Lord, I thank you. Because in the middle of things, I realize I can acquire my joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it. This joy I have, the world can't take it away. Lord, have mercy. Yes, it's been rough. Yes, it's been tough. But what the devil meant for evil. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. For my good. And so I'm going to keep running to, to see what the end's going to be. I won't let the devil rob me of my joy. With thanksgiving, I will mind myself. says that the heroes of faith died 
promise. But thanks be unto God, the promise has been fulfilled. And that promise is unto you, your children, and your children's children. All those that are afar off, you got a promise, you got a promise, you got a promise. And this might be a suffering way. This might be a way filled with difficulty. But let me leave this word of encouragement to settle your spirit. Though you suffer, after you have suffered a while, then God will settle you. Then God will establish you. Then God will make you perfect. You won't keep wanting, but you'll be content. You won't keep longing, but your hope will be filled. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody clap their hands and get your joy back. Get your joy back. Come on, don't let it just be a word. Get your joy back. Come on, the Holy Ghost is hovering. Been hovering the whole service. I know we can't have no altar call, but you can make an altar call right at your home. Open up your mouth and tell them thank you. Go down memory lane for a moment. Used to be a liar. Used to be strung out. Used to be lost. Used to be suffering. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Watkins, chairman of the FFI District 1. And we have had a powerful service tonight. Did not you enjoy the Word of God tonight? Oh my God. Listen, can I tell you something? We want to pray for you concerning whatever it is upon your heart tonight. Whatever the need may be, we've got prayer warriors waiting to touch with you in prayer and agree with you in the things that God wants to do. Look at the bottom of the screen. We have a phone number there, an email, and we have warriors waiting to pray with you. I believe God wants to do something wonderful for you tonight. You just got to make the call. Make the call. It's right there on the screen. They're waiting for you to call. Come on, join with us tonight in prayer. And whatever you do, keep Jesus first.